This is problem 7-117. It's on page 363. A refrigerator uses R134A as the working fluid and operates on an ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle between 0.12 and 0.7 megapascals. The mass flow rate of the refrigerant is 0.05 kilograms per second. Show the cycle on a TS diagram with respect to saturation lines. Determine A, the rate of heat removal from the refrigerated space, and a power input to the compressor, B, the rate of heat rejection to the environment, and C, the coefficient of performance. So, let's see, what are we given here? It's an ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle using R134A as the working fluid. We're told that the minimum pressure is 0 0.12 megapascals and that the maximum pressure is 0 0.7 megapascals. That's what they told us in sort of a roundabout way. They told us that the mass flow rate of the refrigerant is 0 0.05 kilograms per second. We're supposed to make a TS diagram for this. So let's start with a TS diagram. And if we were to draw the standard vapor compression refrigeration cycle, it looks a lot like a Rankine cycle, except at this point, uh, is not a turbine that's going this way, it's a compressor going this way. Where we go from uh, state one at the entrance of the compressor, isentropically up to state two, where the fluid is compressed and superheated. Then we go through a condenser that extracts energy from the working fluid all the way over to the saturation line at state three, so it's a saturated liquid. And then, rather than going through a turbine to extract some energy, we simply drop the pressure. So it's an irreversible process that uh, increases entropy, where we move to state four here at the same pressure as state one, so we can go back and complete the cycle. So this is, this is rotating, if you will, counterclockwise, whereas a work producing cycle rotates clockwise on a TS diagram. Uh, in any case, uh, this is our cycle diagram, and we'll have to fill in all the relevant information, <clears throat> but a place to start is right here. They told us that the uh, minimum pressure, how did they word that? Uh, let's see, between, yeah, well they just told us the two pressures. Well, this is a line of constant pressure in the standard cycle, and this is a line of constant pressure in the ideal cycle as well. So really what they've done is they've given us the high pressure side pressure at 700 kilopascals, and the low pressure side pressure at 120 kilopascals. Now understand what happens here is we put work into this cycle. Okay, we can talk about specific work, I guess. We extract thermal energy from a cold environment and reject thermal energy to a warmer environment. In other words, we use work to increase the quality of the energy, in other words, increase its temperature, so that it can flow out to an area that's higher. So it's kind of like an elevator, right? It's just raising the thermal energy up. All right, so if we begin at state one, that's probably a good beginning state because we know the pressure is 120 kilopascals. We know that the quality is saturated vapor. That's why this point is on the vapor line. So the quality is 1.0. So if we want to find anything like, for example, enthalpy, which we always want to find, the enthalpy in that state is going to be the enthalpy of saturated vapor, Hg, which is 233.86 kilojoules per kilogram when we look up uh, a pressure of 120 kilopascals and then Hg in the R134A saturated tables. So there's our enthalpy. However, notice that the entropy between states one and two is the same, right? And so it might be useful to have that entropy. Uh, I'm not gonna write S2 yet, we're talking about state one. It would be simply Sg. So while we're on that very row at 120 kilopascals, we may as well go ahead and read off the entropy of the saturated vapor and it's 0.9354 kilojoules per kilogram per kelvin. Now, since I want to make my diagram look nice, I'm going to uh, find out the saturation temperature at 120 kilopascals. And when you look it up, that's um, negative 22.36 degrees Celsius. So this line down here 
is all at negative uh, 22.36 and those are degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's our entropy units are going to end up being kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And I've already got one of them because I looked up the entropy of state one. So that's 0.9354 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. Okay. So that takes care of state one. If we want to move to state two, the key is that S1 equals S2. That's how we move from state one to state two. We use process knowledge. So what do we know about state two? Well, state two's entropy is equal to 0 0.9354 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And the temperature, well, let's not say temperature yet, the pressure in state two is 700 kilopascals. Now, if you go to the saturation tables and you look up 700 kilopascals, what you'll find is that this entropy is greater than SG. What that tells you is that you're in the wrong table. You shouldn't be in the saturated tables. Since it's bigger, since the entropy is bigger, you should be in the superheated tables. Think of it like this. The gas is more random as its temperature goes up, as it goes into the, the superheated region. Okay? That's the right way to think about that. So the, the way the energy can be distributed is more random. There's more possible configuration. Anyway, so there are the properties, and we need to go to the uh, superheated tables now, we have to interpolate. I'm going to leave the interpolation to you. When you do it, uh, you're going to use the entropy in state 2, and it'll be between two entropies, so you just interpolate to come up with the enthalpy and temperature. I did both, and here's what I came up with. About 270.22 kilojoules per kilogram, and for the temperature, I came up with about 34.59 degrees Celsius. I did that so that I could add this point to my diagram of uh, 34.59 degrees Celsius. So that takes care of state one and state two. I know the enthalpy, which is the main, it's the feature film, if you will, it's the most important one. And I also found the temperature and the entropy. All right, so now what about state three? Well, state three is kind of special because it's on the saturated liquid line. So we know that the quality in state 3 is 0, 0.0. We know the pressure in state 3 is the, or the high pressure side at 700 kilopascals. And so that's enough to tell us where to go in the book to find the other properties. We need to go to the saturated tables, because that's what this says, and look up 700 kilopascals, or 0.7 megapascals. When you do that, you'll find the enthalpy, which would be the enthalpy of saturated liquid, is 86.78 kilojoules per Kilogram. You'll find that the entropy in state 3, if you're interested, well I am, I want to put it on my diagram, is SF, and that is 0 0.3242 kilojoules per kilogram. We can also find that the temperature is the saturation temperature at 700 kilopascals, and that's 26.72 degrees Celsius. So now I can really make my diagram look nice by putting in this other temperature, 26.72 degrees Celsius. And put in the entropy at state 3, 0 0.3242. And things are going well. Now I'd like to go from state 3 to state 4, but notice that the entropy increases. This is not isentropic like the compressor is. So what do I know about this? Well, this is the compressor. This is the condenser. This is the throttling valve. What do we know about throttling valves? What do we know with the throttling valve? that the enthalpy that comes in is equal to the enthalpy that leaves. That's the key thing. That's the key process knowledge about this. Now, the TS diagram does not show it, but the pH diagram for a uh, standard vapor compression air conditioning or refrigeration cycle does. So you should always have your cycle diagrams handy so you, you can know what's going on. So the key in going from state 3 to state 4 is that the enthalpies are the same. You might say, well, let's stop there because, after all, all I really care about is the enthalpy, and it's the same as it was in state three. Well, I'd like to finish my diagram. I'd like to know exactly what percentage of vapor there is at state four, and I want to put an entropy there. So what do we know for state four? Well, we know that the enthalpy in state four is the enthalpy in state three. That's 86.78 kilojoules per kilogram. We know that the pressure in state four is 120 kilopascals. And so now, if you go to the saturation temp, uh, tables and look up 120 kilopascals, you'll find that this entropy is between SF and SG. That shouldn't be a surprise, between SF and SG. By the way, uh, do we
do we already know? Yes, notice that for state one, oh no, we just looked up SG. So we have that one, we don't have, have SF yet. But SF, if you look it up at 120 kilopascals, <coughs> well, I thought I did it, maybe I didn't. Uh, I did not write that down. Let's go look it up while we're, while we're right here. I want to complete my diagram. So let's see, saturated uh, R134A. Let's see, metric units, yeah. At 120 kilopascals, you go to the pressure table on page 858. It's in megapascals, so that's 0.12 megapascals. If I go over, let's see, and look up SF, it's 0.0879. This is 0 0.0879. There we are. So there is the entropy at that state. Now, uh, to calculate the quality, x4, well, we know the enthalpy in state 4. It's between the enthalpy of saturated vapor and liquid, which I still haven't given you the uh, enthalpy of saturated vapor or liquid, but I'll give that to you in a second. So it would be H4 minus HF over HG minus HF. H4 we already know, 86.78 kilojoules per kilogram. HF, if you look up on that same row that I was on at 120 kilopascals, it's 21.32. And since HG minus, minus HF is simply HFG, and they have that listed for us, I just plugged in what they had for HFG at 212.54. These are all kilojoules per kilogram, so the units cancel. And we find that the quality in state 4 is about 0.3080, or 30.8%. They didn't ask us for that, but I wanted to know. One of the reasons I wanted to know is because the, the, the part of the refrigerant that has vaporized already can't really be useful for refrigerant. I mean, we're going to remain at the same pressure, so it's not going to absorb any more thermal energy because it's going to say, remain at the same temperature. So it's going to simply remain as a saturated vapor, but the saturated liquid, which is the other almost 70, you know, 69%, is available for pumping thermal energy. It needs to be boiled off. In fact, it has to be boiled off before it goes into the compressor. So you don't want to damage the compressor. So this tells us what percentage, almost 70% of the refrigerant flowing through this uh, evaporator is available for the purpose of pumping thermal energy out of a cold area. All right, so that's why I wanted that. Now we could also come up with the entropy at state four. I didn't do that. Let me show you how you would do it. I'd like for you to do it. S4 equals SF plus X4 SFG, where SFG is just SG minus SF. I don't remember if they have that or not. I don't have a calculator on me, so I'm not going to do it. Notice that S G would be right here, 0.9354. SF is right here, 0.0879. And then uh, X4 is this 30.8%. So you should be able to calculate the entropy in state 4 and finish off that diagram. So now I know where this point is, where 0.4 is uh, on the, the diagram. All right, so we've completed the TS diagram. We've also successfully found all of the enthalpies in all of the states. And since we found all the enthalpies, we pretty much solved the problem. We can answer any questions that they pose. For example, they want to know the heat flow rate from the refrigerated area. Well, that would be equal to the mass flow rate of the uh, refrigerant times the enthalpy change across the evaporator. Remember, the evaporator was at the bottom of our TS diagram. It is the part that is absorbing thermal energy. And the specific heat transfer is just H1 minus H4. So when we multiply that by the mass flow rate of refrigerant, which is 0 0.05 kilograms per second, and H1 is 233.86, H4 is 86.78. Anyway, when we multiply all this out, we will find the heat transfer rate. Now notice we've got Kilograms and cancel, kilojoules per second are kilowatts. So this comes out to about 7.35 kilowatts. This is the rate at which thermal energy is being withdrawn from the cooled or refrigerated 
space. They asked for the power input required. Notice that there's no turbine helping us out. There's only a compressor we have to drive. So this is simply the mass flow rate times the specific work input to the compressor, which is H2 minus H1. Again, the mass flow rate, we know 0 0.05, H2, H1. We know these things, right? H1's here, H2 is right here. Plug all that into your calculator you will find that the power input requirement is about 1.82 kilowatts. Okay. So there's the power flow rate in. What about the heat rejection rate? That was another thing they wanted us to find. I don't remember how they worded it exactly, but that's what they were asking for. Well, that occurs in the condenser. And the condenser was after the compressor between states 3 and 2. State 3 had the higher energy. State 2 had the lower energy. So there's the specific heat transfer. Uh, let's see. No, I got that backwards. Sorry, I was thinking of the Rankine cycle. State 2 had the higher energy, state 3 was lower. And so again, we know H2, it's right there. We know H3, it's right there. We know the mass flow rate. We've been using it several times so far. This comes out to about 9.17 kilowatts. The last thing they asked for was the efficiency, the coefficient of performance. And remember the goal here is that this be a refrigeration unit, right? It's trying to cool a cold space, maintain that space cold. Like an air conditioner, or maybe this is a freezer, I don't know, it doesn't matter. The point is, it's a vapor compression refrigeration cycle. The coefficient of performance is what we get out of it over what we put into it, right? It's what we want, the whole reason for having the thing in the first place, over what we have to give to keep the thing going. So since I've already got these set up, Q.L and W.N, I'll just set up the equation this way. So Q dot L is 7.35 kilowatts, W dot N 1.82 kilowatts. Notice the units cancel as they should for a proper efficiency measure, and it's about 4.04. What does this number mean? Well, this number means that for every unit of work you put into this process, four units of thermal energy will be withdrawn from the cool space and put up to the warm space. What you should notice is that these two numbers add together to yield that number. At least they should. Okay? And they do. So, uh, you know, if you think about it uh, as an, an energy balance around a refrigeration unit, we're putting, sorry, we're putting power in, taking thermal energy from a low temperature source and rejecting it to a high temperature sink. So an energy balance around this says that these two flowing in have to add to the rate at which we uh, reject the waste heat into to the high temperature reservoir. So if we put in one unit of work and that pumps four units of heat up, there must be five units of heat flowing into the high temperature reservoir. 